Hey, how's it going? In this tutorial, I'm going to cover assemblies and assembly drawings. So what an assembly is, is the collection of parts in a product. So obviously, a lot of times when you buy products, they have multiple parts in it. So in this example, we're going to use a hinge. And I have some sketches here that you'll use to create the hinge. The hinge has three parts, the left hinge, the right hinge, and a pin, each with different part numbers, different descriptions. And then we have the assembly. So I've gone ahead and created all these. I made sure that I've named everything appropriately first. So I've set my part studio to left hinge, description left brass hinge, and the part itself, left hinge, left brass hinge, and I gave it that part number, and I gave it a revision number of one. So what this does is uh, each of these part numbers have different numbers. 187, 234, 001, 002, 003. The assembly has a part number of 187235 instead of 234, and then 001. It's, and then they all have different descriptions, and I've already set the materials to brass as well. So again, I've clicked on the part over here. I've right-clicked and hit Assign Material, and I've gone ahead and searched this library for brass and assigned it to brass. I've also gone ahead and edited the appearance and colored it gold to make it look like brass. So I have that left hinge, the right hinge, and the pin already completed. Now we need to go ahead and make our assembly. So I'm going to go ahead down here in the, in the menu at the bottom, insert new element. We're going to create an assembly. It creates that assembly. And this is where we insert our parts. So we go up here to the top menu, we can click insert, and it allows you to insert parts as well as assemblies. So we technically can't have assemblies within assemblies, so sub-assemblies within a major assembly. But for this example, we want to add parts. We're going to add the left hinge first. So we'll click that. And if I just hover, you can drop it anywhere, but I, mean, I don't want to drop it anywhere. It doesn't make sense. I'd rather its origin be equal to the origin of the assembly. So I'm going to undo that. So what you're going to do is just click this left hinge. It automatically places it at the origin, so the origins match. The origin of the um, part and the origin of the assembly are equal. And then we're going to just hit check here. So now that they're equal. And now at this point, I need to fix this part so it cannot move in space. So I'm going to click it, right click it, and hit fix. So we always generally tend to fix one part. That way it acts as an anchor for the other parts. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the other parts of the assembly. Insert. And I'm just going to kind of place them out here in the space. And I can actually technically go ahead and I, if I wanted to, I can, that's a nice thing about these assemblies, I can add as many of these parts as possible. But um, obviously we only need one, hit, one pin. But that's a nice thing about assemblies, you can create the part once but then add it many times into the assembly. So we have these two parts. Okay, good. Okay, and now we need to make these parts together so that it creates our product. So, we're going to use some mate tools up here to do that. We have an array of mate tools. We have a fastened mate, revolute mate, slider mate, planar mate, cylindrical mate, pin and slot mate, ball mate, and parallel mate. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to do um, before I go ahead and make anything, I'm going to go ahead and turn this right hinge. So I built this hinge in a way that it's not going to line up correctly with the left hinge. So I want to turn that so it's equal. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And then you get this manipula manipulation menu. So you can actually technically drag this out if you want or move it around. So you can take any of these sliders. But I'm going to take this so I can turn the axis and and you can also type it in, so I'm going to type 180. Let's turn 180 degrees. Now it's going to line up correctly to the left hinge. Good. And I'm just going to escape out of this menu. Okay. And now we're lined up. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put the, uh, I'm going to make together the right hinge and the left hinge first, and then I'm going to place in the uh, pin. So to do this, I'm going to first use the revolute mate. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to select, and so if you hover over the part, you can see all these places you can snap. Okay, and I, that's the nice thing about Onshape, you can snap to port parts. So I'm going to snap this side of that cylinder slot of the left hinge. Okay, and I want it to revolve with the cylinder slot here on the right hinge. And then, good. See how they're put together? Okay. We're not going to add another revolute. Now we need to add the pin and slot. So we're going to use that pin and slot mate. We're going to add that pin in there. So pin and slot mate. And I'm going to hover over the end here. And I'm going to hover over and there. Check. Good. So now that's put in there. And the nice thing about this is, is um, I can manipulate this right hinge now in a way where I can test it out. I can actually turn it because we changed, we made it the revolute mate. We can actually revolve it to see how the um, parts work together. So it looks like it works nicely together. I right, set this back to zero, and you realize that I can't actually slide this anywhere because of the way I created the mates, it, it, it forces you that you can't move it. That's why we create those mates. It's stuck together. But we can revolve it because of the revolute mate. Okay, so the party, the assembly here is done. But we're going to need to do some other things. Okay, uh, first things first, just so I don't forget, let's rename our part. Or the assembly, excuse me. Right click on it, hit properties. This is going to be called, and I have the information here, brass hinge, brass door hinge, and the part number. Let's copy this so I have it. Copy. Okay. This is going to be called a brass underscore hinge. Brass door hinge. Give it that part number here. Make your revision as one. Apply and close. Perfect. Okay. Next thing, we're going to create an exploded view. What an exploded view does is it allows you to separate the parts. That way, when we put into a drawing, you can see how the parts interact with each other better. So the exploded view button's over here on the right-hand side, and we're going to click that to expand the exploded views section, and we're going to add an exploded view. Okay, and this is the first step we're creating, and we're going to click this right hinge, and we're going to slide it out, and we're going to actually slide out a distance here, and it's give it negative one. Perfect check okay we got that first step so what that what that did was we just moved it apart and now ideally I want to move out this pin so I'm going to select this pin and I'm going to slide it out and I'm actually going to go like negative five where does that take us now I'm going to go further negative six that way it's outside the part and you can still see it check we got our two steps hit done we're done with explode view and it goes back to our normal state so what I'm going to take this, and what, what, what this is going to um, take this out a little bit so you can see. What this allows you to do is when you double click on this exploded one, you see how the parts interact with each other because it takes them apart. It explodes them out. And then just double click to bring them back. So we have that set in our menu. Good. Um, the only other thing we need to do is make sure we have a bill of materials table, BOM table. So there's that button there for... That BOM table is here on the right, that BOM table. Um, and so automatically, this we're going to use this BOM table, and it's going to be in our drawing. But the issue is there's some, I would really like to see the material. It gives you the item number, and it shows you the item number, item number one, item number two, and item number three, which is the three different parts. A quantity, there's only one of each. It gives you the part number, and it gives you the description. The issue here, I would really like to be able to see um, materials. So I'm going to add a column here, and I want to add material. Okay, and what that did is added that material column. But I'm actually going to reorganize this. I would really like to see this uh, material column in a different um, spot. So I'm going to right-click and hit move left. And now it's item number, quantity, part number, material, and then the description. I like it in that format. Okay, good. And so that BOM table is done. Perfect. That's all I need. I don't need any other information on it. We're good. So I'm going to take close that. 
Okay, we're all set. Now we can create our drawing. Okay, to create our drawing, come down here to the menu, insert new element, create drawing. Okay, and then again, we're going to, this is an imperial um, product, everything's um, in inches. So we're going to use the ANSI A inch um, template. Click OK. And it creates our drawing. OK, here we go. OK, now, like what we've done before, we're going to, um, I'm not going to go over how to create drawings. So ideally for this um, assignment, you're creating four drawings. You're going to create a drawing for the left hinge, a drawing for the right hinge, and the drawing for a pinch, and then also the assembly. So real quick, because um, you guys are going to do this, but I want to cover one quick thing. So if we're going to create a drawing for this uh, left hinge, as an example, I'm going to click this. I'm going to add it. Um, right now, it's a scale of 2 1. I know that's not going to fit. It's going to be way too big. Um, but just so you can see what happens, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it here. And then you get the option to do the top view. See how big it is? I'm just going to go ahead and place it there. It's way too big. I know it's too big. So what I'm going to do, escape to get out of here. I can go back up. I can go back to the sheet menu. Here's your sheets. And you can actually right click on sheet one and go to properties. And you can go back and change it. I could have changed it before, but I just want to show you a different way to do it So, as well. So if you didn't catch it the first time, you can catch it now. I'm going to hit this one to one. That's going to fit the paper now. Good. So yeah, that, that allows you to go back and change things. I'm going to go ahead and now we're a little bit smaller. I'm going to move this down further here, give myself a little bit more room. Oops, I don't want, I just want to move this guy. There we go. Okay, now we're fitting in the paper. Uh, and now at this point, with this selected, we're going to get a new um, projected view. So I can plug in my right view. And then our, our um, isometric view. And you're going to go through and um, you're going to um, dimension it. You guys know how to do that. I'm not going to go over it. But um, yeah, we're going to create a, a drawing for each part. So this is going to be called left hinge, left brass hinge, part number 187. Two, three, four, zero, zero, one. I know it's going to be putting them in anyways from the um, part studio, but I, I just want to make sure I cover all bases. I, I like to do everything properly. And there we go. Okay, now let's do one more. I'm not going to do the other parts. You know how to do that. I'm going to create a drawing for the assembly. Okay, new element, drawing. Okay, I want to make sure we're at the inch. Good, A size drawing. Okay, so at this point, we're going to create a drawing for the entire assembly. Okay, instead of inserting parts, let's insert an assembly. In assemblies, brass hinge. Okay, so this menu we have up here, we have a couple things. So orientation, I want an isometric because we're only going to have the one view. Okay, and I want that exploded state I made. Yeah, that looks good. So then I'm going to... Place it like right about here. I don't want it. I don't want it too far to the top because I got to put a table up there for the BOM. So I'm gonna kind of place it right there. That way I have enough room above for the BOM table. There we go. Perfect. And right click this. I want to show shaded view. That way you can see. There we go. See that color of the brass. Okay. Perfect. Let's create a BOM table. So we're going to go up here to BOM table, and we're going to get to place that. And I'm going to want to snap it right here. Perfect. And it pulls it in for what we created there in that assembly. Now, here's the thing. I did it in the assembly. So by default, if I didn't go in the brass hinge assembly and set the uh, BOM table to add the material, when I went ahead to, and gone to place it in my drawing, 
I would not have that material column. So I made sure to do that first ahead of time. That way I can see that material column. Okay, almost done, nearly there. We need some callout balloons. We'll click this. And what callout balloon does is as you click on the part, and we can kind of drop it, it places a balloon, and you notice that there's a number in it. That number, hey, it's the item number. So you can use it to identify what parts we're referring to in that BOM table. So I know this is real simple right now because we only have three parts, but when you get something more complicated, we got some call-out balloons. Okay? Last thing, the material. The assembly doesn't have a material because it's a collection of parts. So that's why it's left blank here with dash, 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 dash. So we're going to need to erase that. We're going to double click on it. I'm going to erase that default thing, which technically pulls from the assembly. But because the assembly you know, doesn't have a material, it's going to be dash, 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 dash. So now what are we going to do? C, oops, C, B, O, M. Perfect. So what, what that did there was is uh, I created material C of BOM so you can see the BOM table to check what the material is. And that's it. That's how we create an assembly and an assembly drawing in Onshape.